What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales of neckbeards. Alright, this story's called, Please Leave My Mother and My Sister Alone. Hi again, I'm glad my last post about D was so well received, and while I wasn't sure whether or not I was gonna continue this, here we are. I imagine this will amuse slash infuriate some people, and that's kind of the point of Neckbeard story, so have fun. Warnings. Attempted sexual coercion of someone who's been assaulted before. Fear of losing a loved one, lots of cringe, the possibility of impotent rage, as a certain YouTuber likes to say, my cringy writing style. If I've forgotten anything else, then my apologies. This time, dear readers, our story is actually split into two. One beginning after D and I had already been split up for a few weeks, and the other sometime in the middle of his beaver sausage knee to get in my pants. That one, however, doesn't actually star me. So with that in mind, a new character appears. Meet Nicole, my younger adopted sister and best friend of nearly a decade. She's smart, she's cute, she's small, and she must be protected at all costs. I'm not kidding, I will smack a bimbo and have proven this if someone messes with this chick. This includes sweaty beanpole neckbeards who don't know what the word no means. Part 1. My mom won't take crap from a neckbeard. Sometime around maybe three weeks after, let's call him Dean, broke up with me, my aunt wound up in the hospital due to skin cancer. Don't use tanning beds, kids. They're not worth it. It was bad enough that they were going to have to remove a layer of skin off her back, and she was feeling pretty crappy. My mother and I had gone to sit with her while my husband went to work so that she wouldn't be alone. As she had some kind of gad as I do and wasn't handling the situation well. My mother was of course very worried. This was her little sister and she loved her a lot. Cancer runs in my family in many forms, unfortunately, and we'd lost my grandma to lung cancer only a few years prior. The doctor had assured us that my aunt would be fine during and after the procedure, and that this wasn't an incredibly bad case, but my mom heard the word cancer and sort of quietly panicked. With good reason. The wounds from grandma were still fresh, and mom didn't want to lose her sister too. Our second day of sitting in for my uncle started off pretty normally. I sat in the corner with my laptop out, quietly playing Skyrim, I think. Mom was in the chair beside the hospital bed reading something on Facebook, and my aunt was passed out. I had an earbud in to hear what was going on in-game, but the other out so I could hear mom if she needed me. It had been relatively quiet in the room for a couple of hours when my mother's phone started to ping, letting her know that she had a text message. It wasn't just one, though. Her phone began to sound possessed as she received several messages in the span of a few seconds. This alone was enough to get me to turn and look at her since the only ones I knew who shotgun text a few sentences at a time were myself and my sister. Mom read quietly for a few moments, then her face wiped itself of emotion. Both she and I have very expressive faces. We're open books in most situations, but I didn't have a clue what she was feeling at that moment. She almost seemed to turn to stone before slowly beginning to melt in what could only be rage. At this point in time, I'd finally told my mother a soft version of what had happened with Dean during the months we dated. She and I were very close, and she realized something was up because apparently I had been acting pretty abnormally. One day, she'd kind of cornered me and demanded I spill, so I did. I left some of the grittier details out, of course, but she had more than a vague idea of what had gone down. As I had assumed, she wasn't happy. It had taken a lot for me to convince her to not go after that slimy little poo face, but she was still very upset about it. I'm not going to go into super detail here because it's not really my place, but my mother had grown up in an abusive family where someone she loved and trusted had sexually assaulted her and gotten away with it. It messed her up pretty badly mentally, and she'd spent the majority of her life trying to get herself to a point where she was okay about things. The idea that her daughter had gone through anything similar, though I don't claim to have had things nearly as bad as she did, she'd been through a lot, devastated her. This was especially hard on her because, well, Dean and I dated, and he and mom were sort of tentative friends. 
She'd always thought something was pretty off with him, but they had some hobbies in common. They both liked science and computers. Mom worked for IBM for a while and knew a lot about them. She's where I've gotten a lot of my love of them from. And many a time, when I came home from school, I would find that he'd already biked over so he could help her in her garden and talk shop while they worked. She felt like she should have seen this coming, and I really think she blamed herself for it for a long time despite my insistence that it wasn't her fault. After a few moments of watching my mother nearly hulk out and crush her phone or something, I asked her what was wrong. There weren't many things I could think of that would cause such a reaction from her, and what she read to me was not something I expected. Apparently, the one shotgunning text to her was Dean. After we'd broken up, communication with him had all but ceased to exist with my mom. Thankfully, so this was the first time she'd heard from him in a while. He hadn't broken the silence to catch up with her, though. No, Dean had a very specific reason for contacting her. Dean had had a wet dream about my mother. He then decided it was a good idea to describe it to her. In explicit detail. Yes, friends. You read that right. Dean had sent my mother several paragraphs of a nearly pornographic, trashy romance novel-styled fantasy he'd had about her. My married, loyal mom. The one who wanted him dead a few weeks ago due to what he'd done to her daughter. Not only that, but the last message was him asking her if she'd like to give reenacting said fantasy with him a go. Now, I'd like to clarify something here. Dean knew where we were right then and what had been going on. I was absent from school for a few days to be there with mom through all of this, and our school was small enough that any kind of newsworthy gossip tended to spread fast. Most everyone had known what had happened to my aunt within the first day of me being gone, according to a few of my friends. And yet, somehow, Dean thought this was an appropriate time to channel his inner brindle chase and proposition my already stressed mother. I don't know what my mom said to Dean to get him to leave her alone. She has a tongue that cuts like knife, so I know it was bad, but she refused to let me read it. Dean, however, never contacted her again, and from what his sister Lou told me, it apparently scared the living crap out of him. Good. Part 2. I wish you told me earlier, Nicole. I know you're reading this. Toward the end of my time with Dean, things were getting a little tense. This was after he'd started getting handsy, but before D-Day. Look, I like dumb puns, so sue me. I had once again come home from school to find Dean already at my house much to my annoyance. I was and am a person who needs her space, and I was a little desperate for some time to myself. Dean was clingy beyond belief, and it was driving me a little insane. So when mom informed me that she needed to go to the store for a few things for dinner, I jumped at the chance to go with her. Mom had a heart attack a few months prior, and neither Nicole nor I liked her going off by herself to places that she might have to lift things. So it was a general rule that one of us would go with her. Nicole had some sheet music she needed to learn for an upcoming performance, so she decided to stay home and keep Dean company. She wasn't overly fond of him, but I think she knew I was needing the chance to be away from him for a bit. She always seemed to know how I was feeling before even I did, so I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. I was grateful though. Before I get into the action, I feel like I should very gingerly disclose a little bit of Nicole's backstory. I'm going to tread carefully as I can, both for the sake of her privacy and for the benefit of anyone who might find this uncomfortable, but it's kind of necessary. Nicole isn't my blood sister. We were best friends since middle school and close enough that anyone who didn't know us beforehand generally thought we were twins. Mom always joked that we were on the same mental frequency. Being this close, when Nicole's parents got in trouble for some unsavory actions, it wasn't hard to convince my mom to open our home to her. Nicole was at risk of being put into the system and none of us wanted that for her. We eventually wound up legally adopting her, which was a very long process. Nicole's mom eventually started to rebuild her life, so Nicole would go visit and stay with her for a few days at a time. When her mom got married to a man she'd only known for a few months, those visits waned a bit, but Nicole was determined to keep a relationship with her mom and did continue to go now and then. Nicole's new stepdad wound up being uh, not a great person. At some point, he sexually assaulted my sister and later went to prison for it. 
It changed Nicole a bit, which is completely understandable in my opinion. She became quieter and more closed off, though she's been getting better since. I didn't find out until much later on, but shortly after Mom and I left that night, Nicole decided she was going to make some of the rose earl grey tea she and I both loved, since it, along with some honey, helped keep overused voices from being too much of an issue. She'd asked Dean if he wanted any, but Dean hated tea, so she wandered into the kitchen with sheet music still in hand, leaving Dean to watch whatever show was on the TV. She told me she was practicing while she heated up the kettle. Nicole projects very well when she sings, so it was easy for Dean to come into the kitchen behind her without her hearing him. Dean wound up very literally cornering her, and at first, he only acted as though he was wanting to read her sheet music over her shoulder. Dean didn't give two craps about music as a whole, as Nicole knew him very well. He was always giving both of us crap for taking choir as seriously as we did, so she knew damn well he had ulterior motives. She didn't like how close he was, nor the fact that he had a hand on the small of her back as he read, so she told him she'd appreciate it if he backed up. Dean actually straight up ignored her request and reached over to close the sheet music before finally getting to the point. She won't tell me to this day exactly what he said to her, but Nicole told me that he basically started whining about how little I was putting out, Jesus, before asking her if she'd like to help him get revenge on me. He wanted to screw my sister in my bed. Nicole froze. When retelling the story, she glossed over this, but I imagine it brought everything that she went through back to the surface. I can't even begin to understand how she must have felt at that moment. She didn't respond, and neither of us wants to think about what might have happened. Dean probably would have taken her silence as accepted, and by now everyone reading probably gets where he might have gone with that. Thankfully though, that was when Mom and I walked through the front door. Our dog Piggy, not named by us, went nuts as per usual, and her barking seemed to knock Nicole out of her panic. She left the kettle whistling on the stove and ran to our room. She wouldn't talk to me for the rest of the night, and later she told me she was afraid I would be mad at her. Like somehow I would blame her for my piece of crap boyfriend's actions. I want to make it clear, I would never blame her for something like this, but she was scared. I knew something was wrong, but anytime I brought it up, she just begged me to drop it. I actually found out what happened on the same day that Dean sent those gross messages on Facebook. I had gone to her to vent about how pissed and grossed out I was about it all, but noticed that as soon as I told her, she got really quiet. Usually, Nicole was just as protective of me as I was of her, so I had actually expected to have to ask her not to go knock down his door, and her reaction scared me. I knew the look on her face by now. It was the look that she had when she talked to her mom who kept bringing up how crappy she was for telling the police about her stepdad. This time, I didn't take no for an answer. I demanded she tell me what the hell was going on. She told me what you read above. I was blown away in the worst way possible. I knew by this point that Dean was scum, but this, I immediately blamed myself and she told me that's why she had kept it from me. Nicole knew this wasn't something I'd allowed to happen, and she didn't want me to take responsibility for it. She told me she loved me and that she was just glad it was over with. I also found out that this was part of the reason Mom had decided to get revenge on Dean once we'd broken up. Nicole had confided in her as the three of us had known each other for a long time, and she knew Mom could see keep a secret. At first, I was a little hurt that she'd gone to her rather than me, but I get it. I'm also a lot more satisfied now, knowing that mom screwed him over as hard as she could. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed both stories today. I know this was a little long and I'm sorry about that. I've been trying to get this out for a couple days and short and sweet isn't exactly my modus operandi. Nicole, if you're reading this, I love you so much, you're so much stronger than you think you are, and you deserve the world. Thanks for both your permission to put your story here and for the encouragement you've given me throughout all this. Thanks to everyone reading. Shout out to Red X for giving both of my previous stories a go. I don't know if either would have been a scene as they are without you. Have a good night. Wow. Um, it's nice to see such a close relationship between two friends that eventually became sisters. I love it. Um, God, how slimy do you got to be to perv on three people in the same family? While you're dating one of them. That's just, uh, that's despicable, blah, 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 blah. despicable behavior. Ugh. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.